people who you call your immediate uh, colleagues and friends or circle of trust within the police service? Where were these people? Where were they? Yeah, they were there. And I have a very cordial working relationship with every everybody for me. Yes, everybody from my unit and from other units. I mean, the whole ser the police service. I mean, I have a cordial relationship, working relationship with everybody that comes, you know, my way. Mm. You did say that, um, you know, your commercial crimes unit obviously is not narcotics. Yes. So you were not directly related to the case no. uh, under investigation at the time. But it's, uh, the report said that you spent quite some time with the suspects. In fact, they quoted nine times where you spent an average of two hours with this person in your office. What were you doing with that? That is not true, please. That is not true. Those were, <laughs> you know, falsehoods, you know, that they were peddling just to make my case, you know, a bad one. And that is not true. That is not true. I, I remember what I was doing was, you know, uh, I happened to know the suspects. And uh, those days, they were not allowed, the relative or uh, suspects in custody were not allowed to go inside. So based on where the, inside inside is the cells, okay. I'm, I I mean the um, where they are kept. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You don't go to uh, uh, relatives are not allowed inside. You have inside, to be yeah. outside okay. uh, the the the, the uh, station before you can speak to them. Mm -hmm. So her relatives live in Kumasi. So what I did as somebody who knows the family is just to invite her you know, to the general office where the junior ranks, we the officers have our separate offices where they, they live so that because I can't uh, host the family and the suspect because they might have some private issues to discuss. So that's where uh, I brought her, yes, a couple of times when they come. But for that number of times that they were quoting mm -hmm. were just uh, <laughs> Uh, exaggerations. You know, so so at no time were you alone with the suspect in that period? No. When they, she's brought, the, I, I, I asked the junior officer who is just close, please, can you pick suspect from cell? He must report the suspect to me that I have brought her. Then before she will be led, because that junior officer must keep an eye, you know, and be there mm -hmm. until she's safely taken back. So that was it. Right. Now, how did you happen to know Nanama Martins? Oh, uh, we are human beings, and uh, you, you, just as I am, I entered my office now, you introduce yourself as uh, Mishra. Yeah. And uh, I'm knowing you for the first time. Maybe you had an issue uh, with the police, you have come, you know me. You, you contact me. So that's how, you know, friendship begins. But you also mentioned that you knew the family. So how did you know the family as well? No. I know because I know the suspect. Okay. And they are visiting their daughter. That's the link. Yes, that's the link. Mm. So do you recall what your first encounter with Nanama was? Um, actually, I got to know her through my sister. My younger sister is a very good friend to my younger sister. So she kind of, uh, you know, through my sister I got to know her. So it's through my sister that I got to know that she was arrested with this issue. And that's also, that is how I got to know her, I know her through my sister. How did you feel that in uh, doing what you felt was humanitarian landed you in the kind of trouble um, that you went through? Aside humanitarian, it's a human rights issue. You know, suspects, you know. But being in a unit that's not directly uh, connected to the investigation, was that something that you were allowed to do? I'm not too sure how you work in the service. Uh, well, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we all do things as a normal thing, you know. Officers, I remember when the whole issue started, an officer, uh, chief superintendent, called me and said, oh, this thing we all do it, especially when you happen to know a suspect, you know, in cell, and uh, he needs to talk to somebody. They all do it. But why has it become an issue? In my case, mm. this was what the officer said. Yeah, sometimes 
when people have an, an agenda, they will always use, you know, things that, you know, do not matter to make a case for you. Do you think that so, someone had it in for you? Oh, yes, because uh, this will not come in a vacuum. Somebody was pushing and pushed up to uh, the level I have gotten to. Wow. Why you then? Sorry? Why would, why would anyone target you? Why I would... don't know. I don't know. But you have a cordial relationship, as you described, with oh, yes. your colleagues and, and the people. But So why would someone suddenly sit in a little corner and decide that they're going to make life miserable for you? Yeah, we must always remember that as much as we have, uh, you know, well-wishers, we also have enemies mm. in life. The enemies, you may not to, you may know some of them, you may not know others. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, the, the, enough of all what sounds like an interrogation. I, I just really am um, curious um, because the narcotics trade is something that is very disturbing to the, everyone the world over. And um, every time a seizure is made or an arrest is made, um, personally, I rejoice because that's uh, uh, an attempt to a cleaner Ghana. And so I'm sure you all take your work seriously as your you know, law enforcement officers. But you will find that this story didn't make you know, the police look in a bad light when the, 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 the cooking was discovered to have now become baking soda. How did you feel that you know, the police is now... At the, the one, in one breath, you're fighting for your own career, but then... The negative press that the police service gets around that time was something that was linked to your case. But I'm just wondering how you felt around that time. What was life like when you woke up in the morning and you're interdicted? Were you under house arrest? Uh, not really, but I was in detention initially at wow. the BNI cells for 45 days. Wow. What was your routine like in the morning? You wake up, how did you sleep? In the other BNI. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have been placed in a very small room, smaller than your office here. Uh, no ventilation, no windows. And uh, um, that is where I was kept. The food was brought to me, the toilets and bathroom, everything is in. Wow. Yeah, so that was uh, uh, my life. That is what you wanted to know. From a DSP mm. with your own office, yeah. and then one day you find yourself in this yes. space. Can you help me appreciate? I mean, how how are you able to sit here so calm? Just imagining that space. I haven't seen it, but I mean, I could be claustrophobic. I mean, how is it possible for you to still, you know, hold your head? above your shoulder mm -hmm. yeah it is just god yeah it's just god it's just god do you know why you were directly accused i i don't know i don't know you were uh, the police oh yes i would like to go back to the police okay i'd like you to give us an account of how you discovered um your link to the the, the, the missing cocaine and how it all played oh, out. I was invited by my CID director general at the time, one evening when I was about to close. That was around between 7, 7.30 in the evening when they invited me and told me that I am being wanted uh, at the BNI office and so I should report there tomorrow morning and they gave me the time. So I was taken aback, but you know, it's my boss giving uh, an instruction. So I left the office. So the next day, uh, I made communication with my lawyers and then we went to report at the BNI. Yeah. So would you say that, where, where did the actual allegation come up? It was at the BNI that. I was told uh, the reason for why they invited me. And it was a direct allegation? Yes. It was a direct allegation. But how did they how did it play out? 
Um, it's I wouldn't want to go back. You know, when you have been invited uh, by law enforcement, they will tell you that you have been. Uh, they have received a complaint. Uh, you know, having been linked to so so and so and so, and so they are invest. They have been asked to investigate the case. So from there on, you are treated as a suspect. Uh, interrogation went on, a statement is submitted, and thereafter, you I was detained. So you went in with your lawyers and yeah. didn't leave for 45 no, no, days? No, no, no. My lawyers argued and argued. And they, they, they said they have to keep me. What was your that thing ran into 12 midnight that day. That day? Yeah. What time did you arrive in the morning? I arrived in the morning, 8.30. And you were there yes. being interrogated and kept there yes. till, and then subsequently you stayed another 40, yes. uh, 45 days. Yes. What, what was your state of mind between when your superior says, report to BNI tomorrow morning, didn't tell you why you were being sent there, no. and then by the time you were told, this is why we brought you here? Yes. What, what was uh, your state of mind? Uh, that is why I stayed there. I was confused. Mm. And uh, because uh, it just came as a blue. So anyway, I am here, so they have to do their work, just like my work uh, as a police officer. Do, do you think that being a police officer helped you enough to appreciate that they had a job to do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, it is an allegation, and they have every right to probe into it and, 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 and come out with whatever uh, they find it. Yes. No. Every once in a while, people get, you know, accused of doing something, and, and you will feel, you know, bad about it. But at, at, at any point, did you at any point fear that whatever allegation they have made, whether you know deep in your heart you haven't done it, that somehow some evidence will stick and, 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 and you could, f you know, find yourself uh, foul of the law? Did you have that fear at oh, any point? I had no fear. I had no fear because I am totally innocent and it's been news to me when I heard the allegation. So I was just confident. Uh, there was no, uh, I did not entertain any fear at all because I know at the end of the day mm. I'll come out of it. Normally you would do the interrogations and then suddenly someone was interrogating you. Yes, <laughs> that's how life turns out to be sometimes. Were they nice to you? Oh, yes, B and I initially, uh, I mean, throughout their investigations, they, they were nice. They did a very good job, you know, and uh, I wouldn't say they were not. They were, were nice people. Wow. And I custody. As a mother, as a wife, with a family, what was it like mm -hmm. for 45 days? How did you survive? Yeah, uh -huh. it, it was not easy, but it's only God uh, that uh, uh, sustained me for all these uh, uh, traumatizing periods. And uh, by the grace of God, I was able to come out of it after those uh, terrible days of detention. Mm. Yeah. But you weren't seeing your children, and no, um, no. were you allowed any visits Nobody from your husband? Would, no. So in that 45 days, you didn't see any family? No, no. Uh, were you worried about them? I was, I was really worried. I was sad because my, my girl was in a, a P6, mm. and uh, she was all the time asking of me, where is mommy? And uh, they have to find some stories, she's traveled. And that kind out of the country because mm -hmm. I used to travel outside, and uh, she was all the time crying, you know, and I was really crying too in the cells, wanting to see them, but nobody was allowed to see me. Mm. That's very difficult. I mean, first you are not able to reach out to family, yeah. something that you were facilitating for a uh, the suspect, Course, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then you are suddenly thrust into this room where you can't see your family. Uh, what kind of food were you served? Um, uh, the food, uh, <laughs> can I remember, because uh, uh, most of the time I don't really take it, they bring it, uh, they come and take it back. Wow. Yes. Why? 
I just wasn't interested in any food. You lost your appetite or you were afraid? <laughs> uh, I was just not interested in taking anything there. But for 45 days, so yeah. you, did you just fast mm. throughout the yeah, period? I was living on liquid uh, drinks. It was almost two o'clock by the time I tried a few things. You know, coming. it was, you know, I go to court, mm -hmm. the re-arrest, I come out, I go to court, uh, re-arrest again, that kind, kind of thing, until I was given bail. Wow. The total how, how, how did you feel, you know, the whole yo-yoing going up and down and then you go to court thinking you're going to get your bail yeah. and then you get thrown back in. Yeah, I, I felt bad. I felt sad uh, for going through all this without cause. And then each time you were you were put back in there, you were denied access to family or family was denied access to you. I mean, why wouldn't they even let Mr. Tehoda be, come see you? Why did they deny your husband at least? No, nobody was allowed, not even my lawyers. Wow. So, what was the impact? Uh, by the time that you finally got your bail, mm -hmm. do you remember your state of mind? And were you healthy? Were you strong at the time? No, oh, at the time I got my bail, I was, you know, visibly, you know, uh, weak. I, I wasn't feeling fine. Very, very weak. Was that because you weren't eating? Yes, I wasn't eating, and uh, the mental torture, the trauma, uh, all of them weighed me down. Mm. Yeah. You did say uh, in, in one of your earlier statements uh, that your children were called all kinds of names. Yeah. You, your son was called Tagor, your mm. daughter was called Cook Girl. Mm. How have they coped since then? Yes, as for the boy, he was in uh, SSS, so... Uh, he could, even though he kept complaining, he was coping. But the little girl, you know, the twelve-year-old girl, you come home, you know, mommy, this is how my uh, colleagues have been calling me. They call me cook girl. You know, sometimes when their parents are carrying them to school, they tune into the news and my stories, you know, and the major stories and fonts, you know, uh, page of the papers, mm -hmm. what they buy the papers from. You know, those children, they are young, but they are very curious and smart, so they will read the story, mm -hmm. and they know they have a, a girl, a, a classmate called Tehoda. So when they come and they see her, oh, uh, they've just spoken about the stolen cocaine about your mom. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they want to refer to her, they say, cool girl, come here. Have you heard the news this morning? You know, that kind of thing. So the whole day she will be very sad. And when she comes home, she breaks down in tears. And we have to encourage her. Uh, I know the Lord uh, was able to take her through because uh, she, 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 she managed what was going on mm. until she left the JHS and now in SSS. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why the police is yet to reinstate you? Oh, we just um, had the, uh, how do you call it, the judgment on Friday. Uh, that was uh, 31st. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, they need time. Some paperwork will be going on, and that will take some time. Mm -hmm. So I think it is never too late on the part of the police. They will do their, uh, uh, their best to enforce uh, the order. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's too late. Just... Friday at the right, and this was just mainly for your reinstatement. Yes. So at the time when you were acquitted, mm. obviously not reinstated at that time. Mm. But why did you feel the need to pursue your reinstatement? Yes. Well, so you know, typically for I mean, the thing you are not guilty, <laughs> so life goes on. But you've decided you want to push to go back to the service. Why? Yes. Uh, the whole cocaine saga has extended, you know, to the whole world. And um, I, I, I had to fight and let the whole world know that I am innocent. Mm. But when I was acquitted at the criminal court, that should not be the end of it. I was thinking after the acquittal, I could just go back. But then... But the, seven, the, the circuit court did order your reinstatement. I, no, I was just acquitted of the uh, crime. Okay. I was, um, 
that, uh, that was alleged uh, I did. Mm. So after the criminal court, that was discharging me from any criminality. Uh, they did not order that should be reinstated. Then uh, shortly, the dismissal letter followed. Mm. Having dismissed me from the service. So it was at that point uh, that uh, uh, I think we we'll have to pursue the, the issue further. Mm. And that was what uh, brought us this far. If you just tuned in, we're talking to uh, DSP Gifty Mawanyaga Tehoda. Uh, if you recall, in 2011, uh, she was interdicted uh, in connection with uh, some cocaine exhibit that uh, uh, turned out to be baking soda after the third test. Now, this is quite interesting, uh, 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 Madam, that the exhibit was tested twice. Mm -hmm and it was positive for cocaine. Mm -hmm. It was at the third test mm -hmm. that it suddenly metamorphosed into bicarbonate of soda. Mm -hmm. Walk us through typically how the process is done. I mean, so that the same thing finally, you know, evolved into something else. Well, I have no idea about how that process went on. I have no idea. Initially, I was locked up and I don't know even what was happening mm. around me. Yes. But when the exhibit is taken to court, mm. I think at the third test, uh, it had to go to the standards authority. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the standard procedure? Well, I don't work with the narcotics. I don't know the pr procedure that they go through, you know, in having those mm. things done. Mm. How did you feel knowing that one day you were DSP in the police service, mm -hmm. someone gets arrested for carrying parcels of cocaine, mm -hmm. then another day that person is acquitted and discharged because there's no evidence against them anymore, mm -hmm. and then you find yourself behind bars? Yeah, that is the $1 billion question, which I am also battling to understand. Mm -hmm. You finally got the judgment. Do you think justice has been served? Yes, justice has been served. Justice has been served. Even in the absence of all of us knowing where the cocaine went and indeed who changed it, do you think that's in uh, your opinion? Yeah, that is the question you uh, must be asking now because whoever swapped it must be found. Mm. Yes, we have to. I think Ghanaians will be interested, you know. To, to find out because at the end of the day all this hula baloo for five good years and at the end of the day if I have been exonerated and uh, uh, that's cleared that I have no hand mm. in stopping on the cocaine then uh, somebody might have been behind mm. it and that is uh, your work uh, so let us together find who did it mm. I am personally interested to know yeah yes and everybody else want to know Ghanaians want to know because they were following my issue yeah and i mean it was a very very started. curious uh, it was a very interesting yeah. issue um and it, it aroused a lot of curiosity mm -hmm. uh beyond that um you know the, the the fact that you were relentless in your pursuit of being reinstated to the point where you petitioned the the, the president yeah and uh, I think he set up a committee led by uh, 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 DCOP uh, and Pabeni uh, Pabeni yeah. committee. Mm -hmm. It was a three-man uh, committee to investigate that petition, and they did their work. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Bell Tehoda is here with us. Is uh, uh, DSP Tehoda's uh, husband, and uh, very traumatizing time. I mean, just imagining. Okay, so my wife travels for a few days and I'm on the phone constantly wondering, when are you coming back? But this is a situation where, in your case, you know that she's been kept, uh, basically stripped of her freedom and you're denied access to her. What was it like? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, it was, it was really um, a very, very bad, bad, bad time for me. Uh, I least expected it, but it came. But what could I do? 
I just rep reposition myself well to just accept whatever it is. So it was not it was not a good time at all. Were well, you at any point um, afraid that the allegation may be true? Not at all. Not at all. Because I know my wife. I know everything he does every second of the day. So I I, I never ever thought uh, like that. I was positive that uh, well, it's one of those allegations. So we will come out. I was positive. So on positive the, when you got your judgment, um, or when you know the, the the reinstatement and judgment was given, it was on the thirty first. Right? Yes, on, yes, yes. Really. How did you feel? Ah, you can imagine. It's all joy. Very great. I found I, I found myself very elated, and I thought that yes, God has given us what we deserve. Yes, I'm happy. I'm a happy person now. All friends and visitors reflected all friends and sympathizers. Calls were coming left and right. You know, wishing us congratulations left and right. So I believe uh, justice has been served in this case. I'm happy with that. The family, the whole family is happy. Everybody is happy. Everybody is happy about this. So that's that, that, that's the joy that I have, I'm enjoying now. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the mood. <laughs> yes. Well, very happy to, 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 to know that you're coping very well. Uh, mm. Finally, uh, uh, dear speaker, hold up. Are you in touch with Nana Mama Martin? Mm. I have never set eyes at any time. I don't even know where she is. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you very much um, for joining us. I, I'm curious, though. Uh, Did you get an apology at any point after the uh, acquittal? No, please. You've not received an apology? No formal statement saying, oh, you know. No, no. no. Right. Uh, can I please ask for one favor? Yeah, I sure. just want to use this medium, you know, to say a few thank you. Please. And uh, I, uh, I've always been thanking God anyway. That is where my first times go to. I want to thank my lawyers, you know, uh, who really stood behind me and, and fought. It was a good fight. They fought to the very last end. I want to thank them, the lead lawyer, uh, Ephraim Agbako Vodwago. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank the other lawyers, uh, uh, lawyer Jebler, uh, Oliver, and uh, uh, Livingston Amevo. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been with me in thick and all this while mm -hmm. and to the very last 31st when the judgment was delivered it had not been easy they also go through what I was going through because people didn't understand why they should be defending me just as people were accusing me wrongly mm -hmm. and there were all kinds of forces they battled me I am so grateful to all of them especially the lead lawyer mm -hmm. who was always there uh, for me and I want to thank my family, uh, my husband, my children, uh, family members, and those uh, sympathizers. Now, some of them I don't know them, but they kept, you know, supporting me in their prayers mm -hmm. and hoping that they will see this day come to pass. And I want also want to thank the media for always airing uh, how things were going until today. And it's that we are even sitting down here to have a, a friendly chat over the whole issue. I am so grateful. May the good Lord bless everyone. Thank well, you thank very you very, 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 very much. And uh, DSP, Mrs. Gifty Mawanyaga.